Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three for this news report today, Monday, November 26, 2012. I'm Darko, and please be patient. I'm, you know, just a little bit of time off there and I get a little rusty. Uh, but I hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving. I know I did, and I appreciate and thank, and I am very thankful that uh, I have so much support uh, for what I'm doing here. So I appreciate it very much. Um, okay, so we covered uh, the madness of Black Friday and, uh, and the zombies in part one. And then in uh, part two, uh, we kind of went through all the police state and some surveillance news. And in this third video, uh, we're going to be covering um, the economy, um, politics, and then we'll get into some eugenics. Black Friday Mirage hides U.S. retail depression. Every year it's the same song and dance from U.S. propaganda machine. Right after the Black Friday post-Thanksgiving shopping orgy in the U.S., the numbers will be twisted to supposedly show that the U.S. retail sector is strong and healthy. That's immediately followed by a rousing chorus of happy days are here again. So once the dust settles after the holiday shopping season and a few of the sheep are paying attention, it will quietly announce another disastrous year for U.S. retailers. What is so pathetic about this sham is that not only does it uh, does the song and dance never change, but it's all based upon the same transparent lie. That lie concerns inflation. So all inflation is produced by the money printing of bankers, and indeed the term itself originated as a shorthand for inflating the money supply. Where inflation closely relates to retail sales is that any, if not all, retail sales statistics are only relevant if inflation is totally stripped out of any calculation. Reporting that consumers paid higher prices for goods tells us absolutely nothing about the health of the U.S. retailers. The article goes on and talks about how um, uh, people are struggling and uh, governments are now handing out record numbers of food stamps to people. It says this inevitable result a more than 50% decline in wages for the average American worker over the past 40 years. In other words, a greater than 50% decline in their standard of living. Food inflation is inflation. More Americans will use, this is of course before Thanksgiving from the 20th, more Americans will use food stamps for Thanksgiving this year than ever before. And an interesting observation, uh, the Thanksgiving that I was at was held by a part of the family that's usually pretty well off and uh, they ran out of stuffing and uh, many other things. And also the same individual in the family who used to work at um, basically a white collar, I mean, you know, trading bonds at the, at the Chicago Board of Trade is now possibly going to be driving a truck. So uh, some ver very interesting things going on, uh, you know, as far as the economy and the standard of living goes. Goldman Sachs global domination is now complete as its Mark Carney takes over the Bank of England back in July 3rd, Zero Hedge made an explicit and very simplistic prediction. Now that the natural succession path of the Bank of England has been terminally derailed, it brings up those two other gentlemen already brought up previously as potential future heads of the bank, both of whom just happen to work for, or still do, at Goldman Sachs, Canada's Mark Carney and Goldman's uh, Jim O'Neill. Then we have the head of Goldman Sachs wants to raise your retirement age. And also while talking to people over Thanksgiving, um, they pretty much agreed with what I was saying um, as far as having to work harder and longer for less, um, taking you know twenty thousand dollar pay cuts and stuff like that, just literally walking away um, from jobs. It says here that uh, Lloyd Blanken, fine, a 57-year-old CEO of Goldman Sachs, who was paid more than $16 million last year, appeared on CBS last night to talk about the fiscal cliff and lay some truth on the American sheeple. You all need to work harder. So you keep seeing this from these uh, big elites and that stuff like that, and the, those that work for the super elites that get a nice comfy standard of living for doing all the dirty work so you don't ever have to see their ugly faces um, behind, you know, the man behind the curtain, these families, these bloodlines. And so most of them are telling the, the, the people, the American uh, middle class and middle class in the world around the globe to work harder. You're just not working hard enough. So it's just interesting because, you know, one of the relatives were saying, what? Well, you know, I'm middle class and I'm just grateful to have everything. So, I'm, you know, basically they're going to work until they die. I mean, it's pretty scary stuff, but that's what, you know, when you got to do what you got to do to survive, that's one thing. When you got to do what you got to do to have 80-inch 80, 80 screen TVs, and uh and brand new cars um every time you know uh, something happens to it instead of fixing it and fixing it yourself you just go out and buy another car uh, just to maintain that standard of living that's that's just uh, that's psycho to me 
that you're going to sit there and you're going to just uh, exterminate yourself and work yourself in complete exhaustion. And there's statistics that have been done on this. They know that America is the most unhealthy country, not just because of what it eats and stuff like that, but because they're just, they work, they work, they work. They don't, they're, uh, they take the least amount of vacations and everything else. You know, I see it all over, you know, from you know, people around just yesterday, you know, guy was working on collecting scrap metal you know, all day. And I, you know, I was asked him, I was like, I seen him and he's like, yeah, you know, I've been busy. I was like, and uh, he's like, yeah, and it's Sunday, my day off. So, I mean, this is happening everywhere. Goodbye, petrodollar. Hello, agri-dollar. So it goes on here and it basically says that when it comes to firmly established currency for commodities, self-reinforcing systems in the past century of human history, nothing comes close to the petrodollar. And it's safe to say that few things have shaped the face of the modern world as a reserve currency. According to some, for now mostly overheard whispering in hallways, the primary commodity imbalance that will shape the face of global trade in the coming years is not a uh, that of energy, but that of food, driven by constantly rising food prices, that's what we're talking about, inflation, due to a fragmented supply side, unable to catch up with increasing demand, one in which China will play a dominant role, but it goes on here, it says, not due to its commodity extraction or processing, but, uh, contra but on the contrary, due to its soaring deficit for agricultural products, and in which such legacy trade deficit culprits as the U.S. will suddenly enjoy a huge advantage in both trade and geopolitical terms. And here's a um, real graph of China's deficit uh, dive, saying that trade surplus deficit for agricultural products in U.S. Uh, dollars and billions in 2009, uh, just basically here uh, dropping. While both Europe and the U.S. Uh, kind of edge up, it says China is a huge disadvantage as it accounts for 20% of the world population, but only 7% of arable land. And for a suddenly very food trade deficit vulnerable China, it means that the biggest winners may be Brazil, U.S., and Canada. Oh yeah, and Africa. Obama to hold private swear-in in ceremony uh, for second presidential term. So one month from now, on January 20th, 2013 says that President Obama will be required by law to be sworn in for a second presidential term by noon. However, something mysterious is happening again with the ceremony raising the eyebrows of some. Since the 20th uh, falls on a Sunday, a private ceremony will be held signifying the possibility of fraud as the public ceremony will be held the following day. The fact is that even a deviation by even one single word during the ceremony as admitted by Chief Justice Roberts in 2009 could signify an unlawful and unconstitutional swear in as we saw four years ago. Denver man accused of threatening to kill Obama mentally ill says judge a 20 year old man charged with threatening to kill the president during a, during a visit to the state is severely mentally ill and must remain in custody says a federal judge. So pretty creepy now that you can get visits by the US uh, Secret Service just for tweeting something about the commander in chief. Um, also uh, pretty uh, crazy stuff with uh, Marines or uh, veterans and stuff like that getting thrown into mental wards uh, for criticizing people on social networks. So, Kentucky teacher in trouble for politi politically charged message on whiteboard. Most of you have probably already seen this, but um, it's a completely loaded article um, and it doesn't really describe what really happened. So, the statement was not part of any course curriculum or lesson plan, so that's like I said before, you don't, there's no deviating from the curriculum anymore. So uh, I've covered this before about a, a video where the student actually recorded this, um, uh, this individual who said he was going to vote for Rom Romney or I don't know who it was. It was basically almost two years ago, and uh, he basically got attacked by other students, and the teacher actually started to uh, 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 jump on the student, attacking them for not, you know, basically bashing Obama or whatever it was. But it says an unidentified student in the classroom snapped a photo of the statement on the whiteboard and gave the photo to the Sentinel Echo. Bennett said that part of Baker's punishment was a required apology to her students. The apology had reportedly already been given. Quote, the teacher made a mistake, and I believe the teacher regrets that, Bennett said, according to the Sentinel Echo. Quote, our objective is to teach the established curriculum. So just be good zombie drones and raise a nice dumbed-down population of consumers. Good job. What they're not saying is that it was originally a student that had wrote it uh, or had taught her had uh, raised the uh, this quote and... Um, it had to do with, you know, oh, uh, you know, Democrats or Republicans won't go to heaven or something like that. Something real stupid. But it says that one of the comments said she wrote it in 
uh, after a student said it and was discussed in class. It says, when I was in school, granted a good long time ago, we did at times discuss topics that came up in class, even though they may have deviated from the almighty lesson plan. Then something I'm seeing pretty interesting after we were just talking about uh, Obama and uh, swearing in in secret again is uh, Navy fires two more commanders, David Petraeus, John Allen, Charles Goet, Jeffrey Sinclair. Says the Navy on Monday dismissed two commanders amid allegations of misconduct weeks before they were both scheduled to assume new commands. So interesting. Because there's been a lot of people that have been stepping down or, quote, getting fired. Rats jumping ship, high-profile pro, uh, gangsters are leaving Obama. Just say days after Mafia boss Barack Obama was re-elected to his throne, several of his key foot soldiers appear to be jumping ship from his regime. Obama will be hard-pressed to fill these positions with such obedient thugs. Well, they're already starting to come out of the, out of the woodwork. Key players in recent false flag operations submit resignations to Obama. One day after President Obama was re-elected, Hillary Clinton, Secretary of State, announced that she would be stepping down from her position in 2013. Potential replacements include, of course, Skull and Bones, John Kerry, like I've mentioned before, Susan Rice, probably the most realistic ex-UN ambassador. But she does such a good job for them over there that she may just stay there. Purity Exchange Commission uh, head is stepping down. I think Eric Holder is stepping down. Then you have Israel's Defense Minister Barack abruptly quits politics. So that's their, the mainstream media is calling it a surprise decision. So this is, of course, just after this whole uh, uh, basically attack by Israel on uh, Gaza. Although, you know, one thing I did, uh, I did find interesting, guys, was uh, in all the radio stations that I was listening to um, during this week, during Thanksgiving and all that, I noticed that most of the American U.S. radio, uh, not a big surprise, but they just completely ignored all the facts that I covered uh, last Friday about who actually instigated the whole thing, about how they assassinated Hamas leader and triggered it, that uh, Israel did not want peace. Uh, but they completely flip-flopped the, that around, saying that, oh, no, everybody's saying poor Palestinians, poor Gaza, and um, nobody's talking about the Israelis that are being, uh, you know, affected by this. So just complete nonsense. But, uh, you know, some people said, oh, it's because of their failure against uh, Gaza, you know, their their attack or whatever, pillar of cloud. I don't think it has anything to do with that. Um, I think the whole thing was just a, a smoke and mirrors for Syria, what was going on in Syria. While, while West Bank, American tourists take aim in a Jewish settlement, says Israeli soldiers supervise an American tourist firing a gun as she participates in an introductory course handling firearms. Says hundreds of American venture seekers have found the latest thrill at the West Bank firing range, shooting pictures of Arab looking targets and learning a new version of Israeli patriotism. It's giving tourists the uh, real taste of anti terrorist operations with Arab like mannequins posing as targets. Texas schools are teaching Boston Tea Party was a terrorist act, so this isn't the first time. Remember, it was Homeland Security that was actually teaching that the forefathers were uh, actually terrorists. The most historical instance of protesting against taxation without representation is now being taught in Texas schools is a terrorist act. So it says, as recently as January this year, the Texas Re-Education Service Center curriculum included a lesson plan that depicted the Boston Tea Party, an event that helped ignite the American Revolution as an act of terrorism. Then we have government website for immigrants come to America and take advantage of our free stuff. Go in there and check it out. It's a pretty long article. It says a we there's a website run by the federal government. Welcome to USA.gov. Encourages new immigrants to the U.S. to apply for welfare benefits. Then talking about the Spanish Revolution, separatists prevail in the Catalonian elections, but support for independence from Spain is splintered. And the uh, vote, seen as a test of support for independence from Spain, a majority of voters of Catalonia have picked separatist candidates in regional elections. Polls show that the support for independence in the relatively wealthy region has more than doubled to 50% since Spain's economic crisis began. Of course, just like the United States, when the um, when the uh, Confederate states wanted to basically succeed, secede, uh, what happened says that the central government of Madrid has vowed to fight the independence movement every step of the way. That's because, well, did they want to be able to suck all the wealth and hard work, the result of hard work from uh, the taxpayers as much as they possibly can. So the bigger tax base, the more money you can steal. So they don't like people leaving that once they catch on to, you know, there's really no benefit for them anymore. And protesting Spanish cops say, forgive us for not arresting those truly responsible for this crisis, bankers and politicians. This is GGN, and I'm Darko.
Thank you.